Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Vintage Story. We are back here at the center of the world, this time with our stuff on us. Oof, wow look at that lag spike. With our stuff on us, and I'm actually going to put our stuff down right here at the get-go because we are in need of a little bit of food. So we're going to eat this and I'll put this crock right back. Perfect. Ooh, really lagging. It's because the world is still loading in. I just, just got us started here. And we're not exploring this episode, so I'm going to drop this back to 512. You'll see some of the world disappear, but performance dramatically increase. Wonderful. In this episode, we are going to make our way all the way back to the north here. Um, and because I have my inventory, I do think I'll grab these onions just in case as we make our way up. The reason we're heading north is because of these copper fields up here. I want to collect all this copper and work towards some of our next copper objectives. Uh, that being armor, weapons, uh, truly advancing tool-wise so we're no longer using the flint tools, and so on. We're also going to need to set up a copper mine where we actually have a, a reasonably good amount of copper over here. Um, it might be worth trekking over this way trekking over this way, seeing if we can find some better copper, um, but we'll at least have a starting point right here where we are. So I am going to head up towards this first copper field, and we may end up having to sleep right off the bat, uh, but I will either see you at the copper field, hello Rip, or I will see you over at the trader. Okay, here we are at the copper, and we did find some cabbage seeds in a seed vessel along the way, which is really nice, uh, but we are incredibly low on uh, inventory, and that's entirely my fault for probably overpacking for this trip. So there's a few things I want to get rid of. First of all, I don't think I'm going to be using this to firewood, so we're going to toss the firewood. And then these onions... I don't need the onions proper, so I'll eat them all and pretend that they're going to do something for me. Um, but just for the sake of clearing up my inventory, we're going to toss those. We're going to put the onion seeds and the cabbage seeds in here. And then once we hit the trader, I think we could deposit some of these spears, probably. Um, we're probably not going to be using all these spears. Anyway, as you can see, we have quite a bit of native copper bits right here. And I think... We'll take this block and start making our way downwards. So let's see how far down we have to go. Oh, and there's quartz. Interesting. And this is rich. That's something I noticed. Some of the other deposits we found were rich as well. And oh, we may not even have enough pickaxe durability. Wow. Too deep as well. That's really nice. We may not even have enough pickaxe durability to mine all of these copper fields because we did find several copper fields several david copper fields no i know you were thinking it but just several regular copper fields all right so i'm gonna go mine all this up and i will see you probably at the trader uh, when it's time to sleep and we're gonna evaluate whether or not we're gonna mine out the rest of these fields or if we need to go back home first Okay, so just as we're heading away from this trader, or away from that copper field, we got 59 rich chunks of native copper, which gives us 25 units apiece. So four of these makes one ingot, and that is, we have 50, we'll call it 60 of them. So 60 divided by four is a number, and whatever that number is, is how many we have. Okay, I gotta actually think on it. You know, I used to be able to do math like this in my head, easy peasy, but on the spot, not as much. Let's see here. 4, 8, 12. It's a lot. We're going to go with a lot. 
Um, I do think we're going to keep mining. Uh, as you can see, we just have some right there in a, in a field, which is great. Um, and I think we can probably toss some of our more damaged spears, and that will give us uh, some room. I already had to toss some of the spears. It's high rift activity, so we're not going to be able to do much mining. Uh, and I wonder if there's any right below the surface as well. There may be. Yep, yep. So it looks like this is quite the vein of copper that got pushed up. So we're going to have to probably deal with that in the morning. And let's go evaluate the vein that we have over here as well. Uh, nope, not over here. Actually, there could be something over here for all we know. With this hill has been very generous to us so far. Although it is getting dark, so our ability to see anything that might be here is questionable. Oh, I got more copper here, and I've got quartz there. Okay. It is getting dark, and we have high rift activity, so I'm going to book it back to the trader, and we can sleep through the night. So I'll see you all in the morning when it's time to go mine out a little more copper. Okay, it's morning time, and I overslept a little bit because I was googling 60 divided by 4, but then I typed it in wrong, so I still don't have an answer. I'm sure one of you has the answer. Let's look here. So this is also rich. Uh, no, you're poor copper. If that's the case, I have limited durability, so let's stay away from that for now. We'll want to come back and get it eventually, but uh, right now where I'm somewhat limited on uh, resources, it's probably not the time. Let's look at the copper over here instead. And your rich copper, so I want to grab some of you. How much rich copper there is here, I don't quite know, because it could be down quite a ways. And unfortunately the prospecting pick isn't going to be very useful to us. And I don't have any rocks indicating that there's more copper here. Let me see if I can find a way up. Just some gravel, that's not very helpful. Because maybe it's up here a bit. Yes, there's quartz. I knew that. I thought I saw something over there, but I think I was mistaken. More quartz, tons of quartz over here, but quartz is everywhere, so that's not very significant at all. What is over here? Ah, yes. There is a ton of copper, it looks like. But it's in this hill. So let's grab these nuggets. And let's dig our way downwards. Okay, and really, with just about almost all our durability used up, we only have 5 durability left. We got 28 more chunks. Well, roughly 28, I think it equals out to being a little more, but that's okay. And now, we can pillar our way out of here. One more. And I'll delete this deposit. We may have missed one or two, but we got the bulk of it, and that's really what matters. Uh, nope, we can't make it over this way. I wonder if we'll find more... I was going to say chunks on top of that, but we're not finding any more. We're not finding a way up there, I suppose. So I think what we're going to do is I have like five durability left on this pickaxe, if even. And I'm just going to mine out a few of the poor copper veins uh, and just get it started. 
and then we're gonna make our way back home because we are out of resources for mining at the very least and we are reasonably short on food we have about one crock of food left um, and so I think we're gonna need to go home there's some chores I want to take care of around the house I wanted to do some exploring which we have succeeded in oh I missed some copper chunks yeah, I wanted to do some exploring, which we have succeeded in. And we've also found quite a few interesting things, such as a good place to potentially store some copper, uh, or to mine for some copper, as well as for some tin, uh, which is right here. This is the tin area, so that's going to be really, really nice, although it is a little unstable temporally. So I'm going to mine this copper up, and then I'm going to quest back home so I will see you when we are back at our house. All right, and here we are, back at the house, where we left the door open, apparently. Let's get this chest off our back, and let's definitely take the opportunity to get some of these tools put away. Uh oh let's see. You all go here. Perfect. And I'll put some more here. And I don't need the pro pick right now either. Okay, perfect. So let's take a look at what we got for copper. I'm going to hold on to this rich, this rich crystallized chunk. Um, because when we do get around to doing a museum, I would like to have that on hand. And now, let's break our nuggets open and just see what we're working with here. It'll give us a much better idea. Let's see. Oh yeah, look at that. And I'm going to calculate this out. Now, how could I forget the six, these six pieces here? And that gives us exactly four stacks. And so that is, let's see, 128 times 4 divided by 4. No. So that's, no, it tells you what I know. 512 divided by 20. Okay, so it's about 25 ingots or so of copper, so that's really, really good. Um, but one problem that we have, and now that we have all this copper, is we actually don't have enough charcoal for all this copper. So we are going to need to chop down some trees and get some more charcoal firing. We have our charcoal pit right here, where we can get some underway. Uh, let's see, just use a medium fertility soil, that's fine. And they're going to fill you back up. And I'm thinking we can chop down this walnut tree. We're going to need about, I think it's two stacks of wood. So we'll get two stacks of walnut, and then the very first thing we're going to do chore-wise is we are going to get, uh, what's the word for it, our charcoal burning. Some other things we're going to be looking at doing is upgrading the fences around our home. Um, and then obviously we need to go hunting uh, because we're low on food. So, oh wow, this took out a good chunk of the tree next to it as well. I don't know if you saw that, but um, wow, this really far reaching, huh? Yeah, see, look at that. Most of this tree's gone. 
Alright, so I guess we'll finish taking this tree out as this wood block glitches out and flies in front of us. There we go. And I'm going to need a new axe as well. So, I'm going to work on uh, getting our charcoal pit firing. And I'm going to have to build a new axe, do those things as well. Um, I am also going to work on collecting the resources needed for our fence because we are going to need some uh, more resources than what we have currently. So I will see you on the other side of that. Okay, and this should be enough to start. So now what we can do is we can work on getting these fences replaced. So I'm going to break all the fences. I'll replace the gates later. And one thing that we're going to do is we're going to be putting an extra fence here. Um, and the reason we're going to be putting this extra fence is, I think I demonstrated it, but to prevent the animals from being able to get over the sides here. So that's been recommended several times. and. I will uh, follow that recommendation. So I'm going to work on breaking the fences one form at a time just to make sure that I don't leave any gaps before we get the chance to make any new fences. And I will see you guys once we run out of fences. So we haven't run out of fences, but we've run out of, whoa, we haven't run out of fences, but we have run out of, uh, what's the word for it, enough fences to do one of these farms. Uh, one thing I do want to do, just as we have nightfall approaching, I'm going to put this torch here, So I want to grab the saw, which I left over here, and I want to grab our oak logs, which we don't have that many of left, and we're probably going to need all of them as planks. So, you're not the saw, so why don't we do that? Let's plank them up, perfect. And one thing I am going to do is I am going to create eight oak doors. I'm actually going to create nine, and I'll show you why. Let's see, seven, eight, nine. So, the reason I'm creating these doors, uh, we actually could go with eleven, huh? is I want to upgrade all the doors that we're using to oak, uh, but also I want to have this so our area is safer at nighttime. Right now, if we have uh, some higher level rift activities like medium high, very high, apocalyptic, etc., even though we're in theory protected, um, our area is too unsafe for us to be outside. So now, we can keep all these open by default, but if we need to lock the fortress down, and by fortress I mean the cozy cottage, we are able to successfully lock down the cozy cottage. And as part of that, I do want to have the rest of this area lit up, so I don't want to get in the habit of making a lot of uh, oil lamps, but I do want to at least make two more oil lamps so that I can light up the other two corners of the little compound here. Wow, that was a really close lightning strike. And this isn't going to provide terrific light, but it will at least provide some light, no matter where we are, uh, which is really good. 
we are going to want to also start doing some path blocking. And before we get into doing the path blocking, I do want to grab our ingot molds. And I do want to just uh, get some more copper passed up because we do in fact have some charcoal. So we can use our remaining charcoal. You here. Take you out. We can use our remaining charcoal to at least start some of the copper because I do believe we have enough. Let me look here. Yes, I should have exactly enough charcoal. So let's grab one of these stacks and just divide it out evenly. Uh, that's not even. Okay, so this is 640 units. Grab this random five lying around. And I'll add this. I think we need to bring each of these to 40 is what ends up doing it. Yes. Perfect. Now I'll light this fire. Great. And so we're going to get this going here. Let me just grab our tongs. You can see there's really not much light at all. We're going to want lanterns. Um, and I actually probably should be grabbing quartz as I find it so that we can get lanterns, but that's okay. And this second peat should start burning any second, so now I can throw the charcoal in and we'll have this burning. And I do also want to take a look at, I know it's not a ton, no, or not at I was going to, ah, there it is, I was going to say, but I should have some stones available. And I can use these stones and turn them into path blocks. And we can kind of get a start to our path going here. So first and foremost, let's bring the path to the front door. I think that'll be pretty important. And that's going to eat up eight of our seven blocks. So we'll get that going to the front door. And this block here is actually the middle. The house just juts out once, so it doesn't look like it's the middle. And why don't we bring this path all the way here so that we have a connection from the front door uh, to the basement. And then continuing on through the middle here, I'll go one, two, I believe it's, yes, here. So three, four, five. And that should do up our path blocks. And then this gives us the opportunity, these two blocks here, put down some flowers. So I think these wild daisies would look really good over there. Uh, again, I am uh, preferential to the uh, lupins, as any good vintage story player is. Um, but these daisies I think will look nice here for now. And these cow parsleys, I'll just throw here in the corner. We'll keep them here for now, but... They probably won't stay with us long term. I also want to replace the door down here. It's a maple door, and I want to replace it with an oak door. And, of course, I want to replace the front doors with some oak doors as well. So I'll get you here. I'll get you here. This is chugging along nice and smooth. Uh-oh. Did he just spawn there? He must have just spawned there. It's because our area is not lit up enough. Um, we can grab a couple spears and engage him in combat. Yeah, that sounds like the smart and rational thing to do instead of hiding in our hole. Uh, can't put you anywhere because I have everything blocked by stuff. So we'll just drop all this in here for now. You're still doing okay over there in the corner. And... go! Look at that. It's because we're professionals. And because one of the spears we used was a copper spear. Okay. Let's go deal with him. Oh yeah, you can see the rift right there. 
so this area is still not safe right now. That's okay. So anyway, like I was saying, you do have to place these doors in a particular order, and I believe it's like this. There we go, and now they'll come out properly. And we can check by seeing if the handles are in with each other, which it looks like on all these doors they are, so all these should be opening properly. Let's take a look here at how we're doing. Should have plenty of charcoal. I may not even need uh, these last two, but uh, I'll just do it anyway, I suppose. And this thunderstorm is pretty something else. Anyway, I do want to take some of these planks that we have here, and I want to make some shelves. And not a lot of shelves for right now. We'll just do four of them. Three and four. Perfect. And what we can use these shelves for are our crocs. So if I head down here, there we go, I can get the crocs coming up along here, and actually I can do three more. And have them come along this side as well. Perfect. And we'll be able to fill that with crocs for the winter, and I believe our copper should be all done. Yep, and I'll save that last piece of charcoal. And we'll get our copper poured into its molds. Okay, so we'll put our cooking pot back. There we go, just like that. And let's see. I don't have that much oak left, but I'll take what I do have along with some sticks. Don't you dare do that to me, Jimmy. Why don't you take damage from stepping on the molten copper, huh? Now he's down. Hold on to this for now, and it looks like we're in need of some food, so I suppose we can run down to the basement. There we go. And I suppose we may as well get these crocs up on the shelf. So what I like to do is I like to keep the croc with food on the bottom shelf, and I like to use this upper shelf for crocs that go here, but they run out of food. Nope. I didn't realize I could put bowls on the shelf. That's pretty cool. We have an extra bowl upstairs that we could do that with. I'm actually going to hold on to you. I'll eat you. I'll grab another meal out of here, and then I should have one meal remaining. Uh-oh. A crawler, really? Ugh. Just drift your city over here, huh? I guess our medium rift activity will do that to us. And it's not that far from daytime, so hopefully we won't have to deal with this too much longer. Let's see our copper is cooling right down. Let's go inside while I finish this up. The other thing I want to do is I want to set up a tool rack. Oh, it might be the vertical rack. Here we go. And I knew I needed sticks for that. So I'm going to make probably two of these to start. That way we can just organize ourselves a little bit better. And I actually am going to take this forge. And I may as well take this anvil here as well. And we'll bring this down here into the basement so that we can have kind of like a little forging area over here where we're lacking a dedicated building and space for it. And I'll just put these here for the moment, although this will not be the permanent location for them. OK, 
Okay. And the storage vessel, which does have stuff in it. Oh, I gotta take you out of my hands, that's why. I'm gonna relocate the storage vessel to right here. We'll keep some storage vessels there. And then we actually could have our forge and our anvil go right here. I think that would be fine. And on either side of it, well, I want to be able to access storage vessels that I placed down here. I wonder... We could actually... Well, these racks just don't have a good place to go, is the problem. It's a little too cramped down here. But I bet you if we made some dark mud brick, we could build a little extension to this basement on either side. And I'm thinking that might be a good idea. Let's break you, first of all. Let's just see if I have enough resources. I don't feel like I do, so that's probably going to be a pro project for daytime. Okay, I'm just going to need to place these molds in here. So my inventory is still just a little cluttered. An inventory chest storage management etc is uh, definitely a coming thing that we need to do i want to build a dedicated storage building uh, and so i think once we get around to doing that now i can just store these probably under here honestly if i put you here put you there there we go and then i can go boom 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 Carry these two, take you out, put you here, carry these, wonderful, look at that. So we have this little area all put together, and we can take some of our sticks, and we're going to have some relevant tools that we can hang up. Uh, so, we'll do that here and here, and that's going to include our tongs, as well as our hammers. Hopefully there's no drifters, there we go. So I'll grab my hammers, and I don't know why I haven't been using these tool racks a bit more, but I haven't been for whatever reason. We can probably put some more here along the back wall for some of the tools that we just have hanging outside. Not the spears. Keep the spears, but you... A prospecting pick some hoes what else might have it I have the shears right there the saw yeah I could actually put the ore up there if I really desired to okay that should be plenty and it is light enough where I don't think the drifters are gonna come out and bother us at least and Perfect. And now let's get the spear. Hardened copper is almost enough. Put you down, put you down. Perfect. I was going to say I can consolidate these, but they're fairly consolidated, all things considered. And I'll grab this hard copper. As well as these ingot molds. And I'll get the ingot molds placed in a chest, and for now, I think we can take our hardened copper and just put it... I'll just put it right here for right now. There we go, so we finally have a reasonable amount of copper again. And now, let's take the rest of these planks. I believe it was like this. Yes. Let's make a stack of fences, and then I can flip this out. And I can make some gates. So we'll make four gates. And that'll get us started at least. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a run for it to despawn some of the drifters. So let's head this way a little bit. We'll head probably just to the edge of this peat field. And now that we're at the edge of the peat field, we can run right back, despawn the drifters. I do also want to take a look at the bees. 
Uh, they're not what I want to do right now, but I do want to just see if they're ready for harvest or how close they're getting. Not quite ready, it looks like. Uh, actually, I do have several harvestable scaps. Not all of them, but I do have several harvestable. And all the scaps are populated, which is great. So we'll have to deal with the bees probably next episode. For now, though, I'm going to replace the gates on two of our farms. Ooh. And how could I have forgotten to do you? I'm going to replace the gates on some of these farms and work on replacing the fences on the rest of them before ooh, going and looking for some more oak wood so that we can complete this project. So I will see you once we have finished fencing, upgrading our fences. Okay, and there is that project all done. So we now have our fences in place, and I've added the extra fences here for your recommendation. So now, I, I know we need food, um, but I'm going to choose to ignore that fact, uh, as I often do, because I am inspired by another project, and that is the basement. So, we're going to want to get some dirt, which we have. We're going to want to get some, well, we already have Dark Mud Brick, very nice. And we're going to want to get some clay, which I don't know if we have. We do have a very destroyed shovel. Ooh, look, more path blocks. Very nice. Very destroyed shovel, although it's looking like I may need to make another one. Yep. Okay. So let's go make a shovel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just gather up some blue clay. And I'm also going to gather up some grass so we can make this dark mud brick. And I will see you all when it is time for us to expand the basement. Okay, perfect. So now we should have everything we need. So let's head down to the basement and try to get a read on exactly how much I'll actually need in terms of dark mud brick. Okay, this is actually going to be a, a bit of a process. I want to expand it by four, I believe. I want to go in by four. So that's going to be eight plus the sides, two, two. So we should need 20 dark mud brick when everything is said and done. I'm going to take these tool racks and just move them up by one, like that. I'll break this one, which should drop all the tools. Hopefully we pick up yep, the rack first. And then we'll just place you all here. And I'm going to do the same thing to this side. I don't know what the uh, 
proper tool for breaking, uh, not tool racks, but mud brick is. Is it a shovel? Yes, it is most definitely a shovel. Okay, I'll put you here. Perfect. And break the anvil, which is incredibly louder than breaking just about every other block in the game. All right. So I need 20 mud brick. Let's go make that. We may have some extra. Well, actually, let's take a look at how much I have after I go here and break this. Perfect. And actually, if I'm just moving it in one, which is all I'm doing, I should only need 16 mud brick. And I have 17, so. Wow, that was a waste. I needed zero mud brick. That's okay. You live and you learn. Cool. Get that placed over there. And I am going to need some packed dirt. I'll probably need two things worth of packed dirt. go here. Let's get the stuff placed now. So I'll put my anvil and my forge here. I'll grab my copper ingots and I'll get them placed over here. And then my tool racks I will keep over here. Let's see. And you can go here. Or mold racks, I mean. Go here. Come on. You can do it. You know you can do it. And here. And I'll just break this last one. And I'll get my molds here, which I actually want to use more instead of having to smith my tools. And I'll take these tool racks and put them down below. There we go. Put them down here so they're a bit easier to grab. Although they are going to glitch into the wall a little bit, but that's okay. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I want to put the tool racks down. Perfect. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take our storage vessels and I'm going to lug them downstairs. And because it's such a short journey, I think I'm going to do it two at a time. So I will go take care of this and I will see you all on the other side. All right, everybody. I think that is going to do it for today's episode. We got a lot done today. We grabbed some copper. We upgraded our house, which you can see behind us. Fixed the glaring error with our farms. And, of course, remodeled the basement. I hope you've enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one. If you haven't already, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe so that you can follow along with the series. Next episode, I think we're going to be focusing on tackling the project of food, working on a few more chores here around the house, and continuing to make upgrades, and laying down the foundations for what I think our next build is going to be. Either a pit kiln, or a storage facility, or hey, maybe even both. Anyways, I've been Finko11, and I will see you in the next one.